What's up, YouTube? Back with another video today. Today is Monday. You know, I just came from a meeting for my regular job. But anyway, I just want to get on the topic of transportation. Just want to make another video on transportation because you know uh, I'm, I've set some goals and I'm making some steps right now in that area for uh, for our launch of uh, passenger transportation in the Henderson Banks County area here down in North Carolina. Uh, it's not delicate transportation, uh, totally separate from our child transportation. Delicate transportation is something that me and my wife did together. We, uh, for any new subscribers that just clicked on, that don't really know too much, uh, we've been in business, I think, five years. Uh, a little rocky in the beginning, in and out, but then we got real serious, put some systems in place, and kind of figured out how we wanted to do it. Now, uh, it's been doing pretty good, but of course the COVID messed the whole situation up. But uh, I just wanted to share that for any new subs, any any new people. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to make this video because I get a lot of comments about contracts. And, uh, contracts with uh, the government or contracts with facility facilities and things in that matter. Uh, me personally, I never really look at things as like uh, contracts. I look at it as a, a, a agreement. I really don't get all into too, too much of like a technical contract, this, 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 and a third. But I think you should have it if you're doing like something big. Me, I've always did small, small things. Uh, working with other people with small company it was more of a agreement it wasn't really like a quote-unquote contract con you know like that but uh since we are hitting in that all right all right and now you know especially becoming a medicaid provider taking the steps for medicaid for provider uh so now you know things gonna change a little bit but I wouldn't be so caught up on like trying to land a, a big contract because first of all, this is the first why I'm gonna tell you this, why I'm, why I'm saying this. You know, a lot of y'all, you know, a lot of us that start from scratch, you know, we don't only have the vehicles or the workload to be able to handle a massive contract, to be honest with you. You know, and that's why a lot of times those people, uh, they connected with uh, uh, just care and companies like that. Middlemen, the the sub to work out to the little guys like us. To be honest with you, you know. But you know, I work with a guy. Uh, I work with a guy. Oh, I know a guy. I didn't work with him. I know somebody that worked for him. But I did receive a lot of information from a guy. From a guy, he had a transportation called Kingdom Transportation. And, uh, he did a lot of Medicaid transportation, but he did a lot of private work. And that's one thing he told me, don't focus on, and he like, I mean, he got about, he, I think he got about 10 vehicles. His company's well more established than mine. He's been in the game much longer than me, you know, uh, called Kingdom Transportation. And uh, I talked to him a few times on the phone, then I talked to him through another guy that I know used to work for his company or whatever. And, uh, but, the, but he had a lot of uh, contracts, quote unquote, you want to say contracts or agreements, like through these private, private nursing homes or private uh, facilities or sometimes even uh, smaller hospitals, you know, uh, hearing, uh, uh, what is it, hearing, hearing school, uh, hearing aid, people that can't hear, you know, people you know, with disabilities, like those type of schools, you might want to try that. He had a contract with them, but I think about 30 kids. Uh, small contract, you know. Um, you might want to try those type of places where it, it's something you can handle with one, two vehicles. You know what I'm saying? Like something like that that you can handle. You know, because, you know, once you go with social service, even myself, I'm kind of stepping out there. But at the same time, we got the funds. If if it go boom, we got the funds, you know. Now, if you got the funds, hey, you can do what to do, you know. You, 
can handle that load when they call it, you know. Some places, like even down here, Wake County, uh, with the school, dealing with the schools down here in Wake County, they had uh, school transportation. They ain't even, you couldn't even be a vendor unless you had five vehicles. They don't even want you. You know what I'm saying? So I think sometimes we gotta grow into what we want. You know, grow into that big, that big contract. Let's take steps, get our money up, and grow into that. You know, that way you prepared for when the hit come. Because if it come, I mean, you ain't prepared. You gonna look stupid. You ain't gonna make a handle. You gonna lose the contract. I mean, I rather walk into something and be able to handle it than get something that you don't perform well and you lose the contract because you didn't perform well when you had the contract. So that's just a little, a little nugget I just want to throw out there. But I definitely would check those type of places first where you can handle with that with maybe one or two vehicles before trying to get out there and trying to step into some stuff you can't handle. You know, I'm just throwing suggestions out here, y'all. I'm just throwing suggestions out here, you know, unless you got the funds. There's, there's nothing wrong. That, that is a good problem to have. But if you don't have no money or no credit, then, uh, you know, and like you said, a lot of those companies want to know up front the vehicles, how many vehicles you got, you know, before before you even do anything. Um, but another thing I want to say, if you're trying to go that route, make sure you got insurance. Make sure you got an insurance broker on debt. They know how much you're gonna be paying for insurance. I know for the school one time that we uh we we didn't get the contract, but. They want you to have umbrella insurance. You gotta have a, a insurance company or a show, not insurance company, insurance broker, because you ain't gonna find these insurance companies on Google and uh, stuff like that. You gotta find you a good insurance broker because you're gonna need umbrella insurance. Uh, you're gonna need commercial million dollar policy. Some of them even want you to have, I, I done forgot the name of the insurance. They gonna, some of them even gonna want you to have insurance molestation insurance like there's all types of insurance out there uh just in case a woman somebody said they got molested in the car etc you know said they want it's like a, they had like when i saw that stuff in them few times we did have a few situations like that you gotta be prepared you gotta be ready and you gotta already have a broken one that that can get you insured for these type of things that these these people are gonna require in order you to even put a bid in for that contract. So these things you gotta think, these things you gotta know, you know what I mean? You gotta have already in place, that way you won't be searching for it when that time come. You know, these things that I, you know, that I learned, but I got a good, I got a good insurance broker. So that's what you gotta do, you gotta find a good insurance broker. And you know, some insurance ain't cheap. Some insurance companies want you to pay uh, the policy for a year up front. I had one I want to do that. They want us to pay three thousand. They want us to pay three thousand dollars up front. But that was one of the, I, you know, that was one of the best insurance brokers that uh, we came in contact over on Six Forks Road. I forgot the name of the company, but that's actually the insurance broker that the guy from Kingdom Transportation put me on with. But now we're dealing with another insurance company. They're pretty fair. They're pretty cool, but I, I did like the way the other people were that I found the first time, you know. But I'm just, I went with them because of money issues, you know. So I had options. So you got to have that. Make sure your insurance broker, whoever y'all got your insurance through, or if you did go through National General, something like that for limousine insurance, that's not going to work. Lim, limo insurance not going to work for these contracts, man. It's not gonna work for them. Some people just call and get the limo insurance. It's really not the insurance you need, you know. You really need the insurance that's exactly catered to your business. The companies that can write the policy catered exactly to your business. Like for us, trial transportation, we could not find them. We still to this day, we still can't find uh, an insurance company that insure our overall business. They felt like it's too high of a risk. Like if somebody was to sue out, you know, sue out our business, the actual business. Now auto policy, we straight. You know what I'm saying? Like we get in the accident, we good, we cover child transportation. We fine. 
you know, so, you know, you definitely want to look into all those things and have all those things in place when you're talking about you're trying to get a contract, you know, because those people are going to ask you that stuff. Those, uh, those companies, those small companies, and the reason why the schools and uh, the, uh, the deaf and impaired schools and uh, the uh, charter schools, if you get a, a lot, you know, a certain amount of kids, um, the uh, the small hospitals and the nursing homes and stuff like that. The reason why they they do that, I feel like they do it, is because they don't want me, to, you know, they don't want to do it because the liability of it. They rather they rather give it to somebody else and uh, let them deal with the liability of it. But I mean, that's the point of having insurance. But that's the reason why I feel like. They don't want it. Why they don't? Why they don't hire just hire driver in house and just do it like that? You know. Now some uh, some of those nursing homes they do like it was one out in Oxford. You know, they had a a, a van that would take the people to the doctors and stuff like that. But then they had companies like us that would come and pick the people up. Uh, take them to when they store runs and things like that. Store runs, they want grocery store. Some of them people and them, some of them nursing homes, they got money. You know what I mean? They got bread. Even the ones that's in the cheaper nursing homes, you know, they got bread. You know, they got money. So, that, you know, you can charge them. They'll pay you $30 to take them to the store and $30 and bring them back, walk them in the store, stuff like that. But when you're doing stuff like that, just make sure you got a wheelchair, a wheelchair van. You know, but you know your insurance gonna be a little bit high for a wheelchair, a wheelchair van. But I feel like having a wheelchair van is worth it because we lost a lot of money not having a wheelchair van. Is that something we're gonna do in the future? Yes, it is. Uh, so I just want to share that about you know things you want to have in place when you when you're trying to go that route. You know, and and another thing, you know got to stay on track like stay on top of these people that's in place uh that's in place at you know in these companies like social service and stuff like that you got to build relationship with the people that's all the transportation department because you know all the time they not accepting vendors so you gotta uh you gotta you gotta be on point you gotta email these people you know stay in contact with them. Get on their nerves. That's what I say. Get on these people's nerves. Get on their nerves that people that's over the transportation and nursing home. You know, you go out to network with these people at these facilities. You're going, you're going to have to do that. Don't... I just feel like sometimes people want it a little too easy. You try one place and you don't try nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? If you got to do a... a be a, uh, you know, a third party vendor do something like logistics care or something like that for a while. Just get your foot wet. Just to, you know, to get in there. You know, do what you got to do. Then later on, you can weed them out. You know, you might you might land that contract with the company that they got the contract with. You know what I'm saying? You can land that, but you're going to have to shop around. Or not shop around, I'm going to say look around. You have to keep knocking until you find, just like Logistic Care in those big places got the contract and they give it out to the little guys like us. You know what I mean? You're going to have to shop around. You're going to have to look around. You might get a better rate than them. You know, but the thing is, back to what I said in the beginning, you got to be in position to handle it because that's why they don't like fooling with the little guys like us because when they give us the contracts, we, we screw them over. Pick up the people late, do stuff. In a hard, in a terrible way, and it make them not want to go with us. You know what I mean? And make them want to even make social service want to deal with the bigger companies with uh, 100 vehicles instead of companies with 10 vehicles. We mess it up for ourselves as a smaller company because we try to jump the things premature, too early, and we make a bad name for ourselves. And that's why they don't want to deal with us. You know, I'm just, I'm just keeping it hunting. You know, and, uh, and I know this because even the companies down in North Carolina, 
that was uh, doing it for uh, the child transportation, Lucas and CMB and all those companies, man. They were horrible, man. They had so many bad complaints. One, uh, complaints, one star ratings on uh, Google. Guess what happened? And a lot of these companies were uh, down in North Carolina. You know, I ain't pulling no race car. They were black owned businesses. And they were horrible, man. And uh, guess what happened? School board got a company from out of state. American, I don't remember the name, American something, something. American Travis Tate or something. Man, and pulled all the contracts from them black owned businesses, man. And uh, only gave them a small amount of, you know, a small amount of the work. But it don't matter now because ain't none of them working. You know what I mean? So, man, that company, man, American Child Transportation, whatever the name of they came out here, man. They played, they paid their employees fourteen dollars an hour, and it gave them benefits. And I'm saying to myself, man, I feel sorry for them black folks and them black owned companies, man. But at the same time, they were horrible. And I know somebody that even used some of them companies for their kids, man. And uh, they was getting paid good money, too. Man, they gave that contract to that white-owned business up the uh, American Sun Trans. I think they come from out of Hawaii, Ohio or something like that. I ain't knocking them. I, ain't, I wasn't mad. The reason why I wasn't mad, you know, I don't care black, white, Chinese. I'm just saying, but a, a lot of these companies were black down here in North Carolina. They were black home, you know, and these people was making good money, but they wasn't performing, you know, and it make the little guys look bad like us. People with 10, 15 vehicles, 10 vehicles, maybe 15, we still small. There's companies out here with 50, 60 cars, man, 100 cars, you know. Like this company I'm gonna be competing with the Henderson Cox, man, they got over 100 vehicles, man. That's a big company, over 100 employees. They big companies. You know, so they they do what they do. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So, I understand y'all want the money, you know. But you got to ask yourself, are you prepared? Do you have people in place for these big contracts? Are you or a setter or these uh, for social services and stuff like that? Do you got a plan in place for when that thing kick off or are you just thinking about the money? You got to sit down and think about that. You really do. Even in your, you know, child transportation, you got to have, you got to have your ducks in a row. You got to have things in place. Because if not, you be running around with a chicken with your head cut off. Then you're going to look bad. You're going to look bad. So, you know, I just wanted to share that little tip. You know, share a few tips, y'all. You know, trying to drop these videos, man. You know, just sharing my experience, you know. Because... Everything I said on this video, I experienced that. Trying to trying to get a contract, and then I realized all that. I wasn't thinking about none of that other stuff. None of that. I wasn't thinking about none of that. You know, so you, you live and you learn. You know, you live and you learn. So I just wanted to share that, uh, share this video. I, I, I hope I helped some of y'all out, you know. And I'm going to try to keep dropping these videos, you know, once a day. You know, once every other day. You know, just do my thing with the YouTube you know, y'all should try to subscribe to the channel, man, and uh, leave comments, you know, and uh, that's it, you know, if I can help y'all any type of way, I'm willing to help, but you really got to have a business plan in place, you really have to have a business plan in place, we small, y'all, you know, we not these big companies that, with a whole lot of money, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, we got to grow in two things, because prematurely you'll make this you'll make your company look bad. And I seen a lot of companies do that. You know, you'll make it look even child transportation companies I seen look bad, like private ones, not dealing with the uh Wake County. Horrible reviews. You know, horrible reviews. You know, I I just seen companies, I'm not gonna put no names out there, that, you know, because somebody might go and find my video. Pull up at the schools, break squealing. Uh, ball tires, expired tags. I mean, just horrible, man. Uh, not having things in order, you know, not having people in place to handle this type of stuff, you know, and black owned businesses. Seriously, I'm being honest with you, 
You know what I mean? And, and, and really making a black community look bad. You know, I don't care if you white. If you was a white company, I'm saying black because I'm black. You know, I ain't pulling no race up. Y'all know how I am. With this, I don't get into all that. But I'm just saying it's bad because it make, our, it make us look bad. You know, especially in these areas uh, like Wake Forest, you know, high class, you know, people, you know, and you, you making us look, you, you making the whole thing look bad with the child transportation stuff, period. You know, and, uh, just say, just some people that just trying to, that don't take their business serious, just trying to make a quick buck. You know, you got to have maintenance laws. You got to have somebody in place doing that. You got to have somebody keeping them vehicles clean, wash them. You got you to keep track of all that stuff. There's no way your vehicle should be squealing, pulling up at a school. That's crazy, man. I about wanted to say something to that guy that day I was out there driving, man. Like, man, what is you doing, bro? Like, what is you doing, man? Like, why are your tags three, four months a spot? That let me know you're not taking your business serious. So, you're... That can make us in a whole, in the, in the whole industry look bad. Like I told you, when me and my wife first started this business, it, we was the only transportation company out here besides another. It was like two of us. Then all of a sudden, it was like eight of them out of nowhere. But me and my wife, no, we didn't. We could have gained more from the opportunity. But like I said, we didn't have this stuff in place that I'm talking to y'all about right now. And we got it got overwhelmed. And uh, we slowed up. And you know, we, we decided to just do it. Somebody called me, y'all. And uh, we just decided to do a small. All right, but if, if we'd had things in place, now nah, we probably would have been the biggest uh, child transportation company down here by now. If we wouldn't have quit. We kind of like quit for real. Because we didn't have everything in place. So my point of this video really... Just have all your stuff in place and take your time. Stop trying to stop trying to land a big uh, a big old contract. Not saying that you won't land that contract, but you know, stop trying to get it though. You know, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna keep it a hundred. It's like people don't want to work towards nothing. They want stuff to come just up uh, the easy way. You know what I mean? You know, I'm going to try to be as transparent with y'all as possible. Just keep it straight. 100. And I, I feel like a lot of people want to do that. They don't want to work for nothing, man. You know, just one land a big contract that you ain't even ready for with one bid. That you ain't even going to make a handle. And then you're going to look back. So what's the point of even getting a contract? The big contract. But uh, I hope I ain't sound too hard. You know, y'all, but you know, that that's just me. That's just my personality. That's how I am, you know. But I love y'all, man. I wish all y'all the best success. And uh, I'm going to try to make another video later on tonight. Try to drop two videos. Y'all stay blessed. Y'all going to share these videos. If y'all want to subscribe, you know, to the channel. And, uh, leave comments. Let's talk about it, man. Once I get a thousand subs, um, I'll be able to do live videos. So that'd be a blessing. And I'm working on a new Instagram, y'all. Um, that way, you know, I, uh, you know, we can stay connected through Instagram or whatever. But y'all be blessed. On to the next one.